Okay. Yes. Let me also um, say that if anybody has a question for Sarah, why don't you go ahead and message it to Amanda or I, and once Sarah gets a breath or at the end, we can ask those questions of her directly. Yeah. Yeah. The way a small group, so we can, we can kind of see how it goes. So, so anyways, I'm Sarah, I will share my screen here. Um, I am an, a licensed acupuncturist here in Knoxville and let me present. Hopefully everybody can see that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yay. So we're kind of doing a talk today. I'm going to try to shrink this down. There we go. Um, about the, the psychological and, and uh, physical benefits of acupuncture and fertility. Sorry, I'm just moving your faces so I can see you, but still see my screen. So, um, so that, that's basically um, kind of the overview. And I love to, I wanted to start, whoops, with a quote. Um, so this is kind of one of the principles of acupuncture. So to heal through balance. So this is from the Huangdi Neijing, which is one of our early, early texts on acupuncture. So acupuncture is over 5,000 years old. So um, I just sort of love this. So to harmonize, to balance is to heal. So we're trying to look for that, that balance and that harmony, um, whether that be emotionally or mentally or physically, just to kind of try to get through this journey and optimize everything a little bit. So um, I'll finish my introduction because I actually have a slide on it. So that way you guys can see it. Um, so I founded the Tennessee Center for Reproductive Acupuncture in 2016. We moved here that year. Um, from Indiana. So I'm a Midwestern girl. Um, I've been practicing since 2008. I got my master's degree um, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and um, I started specializing in infertility in 2012. So I've been at it a while. Um, prior to that, I actually have um, a bachelor's degree in biology. So I was actually pre-med before I decided to change to acupuncture. So um, the fertility is, is for me at least kind of a really nice way to, to sort of incorporate my interest in Western science and my interest in holistic medicine. So it's been kind of fun. Um, so that's basically my little bio. And so I wanted to start with sort of a definition of acupuncture, a little bit about what it, what it encompasses and what it is for people who don't know. Um, so fundamentally it's the use of needles to treat pain, um, treat and prevent illness, pain, or dysfunction. Um, and so in a treatment itself, sterile acupuncture needles are placed in different points around the body. And I have a cool picture of where all the points are. So I'll show that to you guys in a little bit. Um, but it depends on, you know, what's going on. So obviously treating elbow pain versus endometriosis would be different points, right? So um, they're usually retained for about 20 to 30 minutes when you just get to take a nice little nap um, and then removed. Um, and it can be combined with a few other um, techniques, which I've kind of pictured here. So um, this is moxibustion, um, which is the burning of a dried herb mugwort over the skin. This is actually something we use um, occasionally with painful periods and things like that, but most commonly for breech babies, actually. So acupuncture with moxa can help turn a breech baby. Um, scraping or gua sha, which is great for um, someone who's using morning sickness. It's also used a lot for musculoskeletal conditions. Um, and then this is cupping. And I usually use a more of a sliding cupping. So it looks a little bit different, but it feels amazing. Um, kind of just like a massage technique. And so one thing to know about acupuncture is that it's, it's sort of like exercise. So it's a therapy style treatment. Um, so it's kind of like if you went to the gym once a month, it wouldn't really do much for your fitness. But if you went once a week or twice a week, it would be um, more of a benefit, right? So you'll find as we start talking about fertility and acupuncture and some of the timing recommendations that the closer you are to say an embryo transfer retrieval, the increase um, in frequency of treatments is recommended. So just to kind of give that as an overview. So they like to say the dosage of acupuncture is the frequency. Um, and so the treatment is actually relaxing and comfortable, um, which I know surprises a lot of people, but it's really wonderful. And then here's that cool picture of all of the points. So there are over 360 points all over the body and they're organized on these meridians, which are these little colored lines. Um, and they actually correspond to different organ systems. So um, this blue one here is lung. Um, this one over here, this green one is gallbladder. And, and what I love about this picture is it, it kind of gives an idea of why sometimes we treat points on the feet for issues other places in the body. So we'll use the gallbladder meridian, which is kind of starts here at the toe and then goes all the way up and ends basically on the head. It sort of loops around the back of your ear as well. So. Um, gallbladder meridian is used a lot for headaches, migraines, things like that. And so we actually use points on the foot. So it's almost like um, maybe like opening up a dam to relieve a, a, the flow of a river upstream, if that makes sense. So 
sometimes this picture is sort of nice to understand why we're using points so far away from you know, the area of issue. Let's see. And so then this is the other thing that I get asked quite a bit. So how small is an acupuncture needle? So it's actually as thin as a hair. Um, you can kind of see compared to even just a syringe, it's really, really tiny. And I brought one to show you guys. I don't know if you can still see me or if you can even see this. Let's see, where's my screen? So it's actually flexible. Um, so they're super, super tiny. So that's something I think that shocks a lot of people. And they're obviously sterile and one-time use. And so we'll kind of go now into the physical side of acupuncture for fertility specifically. Um, and these are probably the two main things that we talk about in the clinic in terms of the physical benefits. And then I'll talk a little bit more about what that looks like in some research and things that, that are pretty interesting. So it improves blood flow and regulates hormones. So obviously improved blood flow can support a whole host of different things that happen during um, a fertility treatment cycle or just trying naturally. So supporting follicle or egg development, um, lining thickness and quality, and that in turns, um, as we'll show in the research, improves implantation and overall live birth rates, which is pretty cool. So the blood flow increase is actually something they can measure with an ultrasound on the uterine artery. So you can really see it, which is really neat. Um, and then hormone regulation, um, is something that can take place both in the cycle and long-term. So for somebody who say has PCOS and who doesn't ovulate, um, over time, they'll see their cycles return to a more normal fertile cycle where they're ovulating roughly mid-cycle, having a good luteal phase, um, good healthy menstrual cycle, things like that. Um, so those are kind of the little overview there. And so I'll kind of get into research. I'm a little bit of a research nut, so I hope this isn't too much. Feel free to ask questions. Um, but these are kind of the two main protocols. And I apologize in advance, they always study IVF, um, but obviously those principles you know, of increased blood flow and things like that can be walked back to any cycle. So we'll kind of talk about that too. So this first protocol is the Stenner Victorin protocol. And I use this, I don't know, um, pretty much on every single patient, depending on, on what point of the cycle they're in. Um, so this is actually the protocol that gets blood flow going to your uterus and ovaries. So it's um, something that decreases uterine impedance. So the impedance in blood flow. So it's kind of a backwards way of thinking about it, but that's what they call it. Um, that lowered impedance leads to better implantation rates. So that's something they know. They actually measure that in IVF patients occasionally. Um, so if you have reduced blood flow, you have a, a poor outcome um, with IVF. So better blood flow is, leads to better um, implantation rates, better outcomes in a cycle. So that's something that's obviously really important to harness. And then there's the Paulus protocol, which um, I'm sure a lot of you that have gone through IVF or thought about it have heard of acupuncture right before and after an embryo transfer. And that's this is kind of the original sort of OG study that um, came out about that particular protocol. Um, we don't use this protocol verbatim. We actually do choose points based on each patient's specific issues and needs. Um, and there's been a lot of follow-up research to this too, which we'll get into. So this is interesting because if you just do one acupuncture treatment right before embryo transfer and one right after, um, your pregnancy rate is 42.5% um, versus a 26.3% um, implantation rate without acupuncture. So definitely worth it. Um, I see patients that come out of town to some of the clinics as well, just for embryo transfer treatment. So it's pretty fun. It's one of my favorite days to see patients actually. And then- um, Eric, can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Are th a, a question from one of the gals. Yeah. Um, are all acupuncturists trained in this? That's a great uh, question. Yeah. And how do you find somebody who is? That's a great question. So um, you probably kind of overheard my bio earlier. So every acupuncturist that's a licensed acupuncturist. So it's important to find somebody, first of all, who's an LAC. Um, that means they went to a, a four-year master's program. They're board certified and state licensed in acupuncture. So there are other professions um, like PTs and chiropractors that can do some acupuncture with less training. Um, and they wouldn't necessarily even have the base to to do fertility treatment, unless they've gone out and done extra standardized testing or something on their own. Um, in terms of most of my training was after school, but everybody is trained in the basis of OBGYN and fertility in school. So that's something we go through. Um, so there, uh, probably to start, I would just do a Google search, fertility acupuncture, um, and start looking at websites, you know, and see who has the extra training. Does it seem like they're really focused on that? Um, some people in smaller communities can't have a fertility specific practice because it's just impractical from a business standpoint, um, but they do really have a passion for the work and do a good job. So 
Um, I always tell people I'm happy to sort of help you do that research. So shoot me an email and tell me where you live. And I'm happy to, you know, if I know somebody or do some digging in some of my groups too. So, um, and I have my email address at the end and I can stick it in the chat too. So, um, so this is uh, another research study. And this basically brings that um, Stoner Victorin protocol and the Paulus protocol together. So this is actually what we base most of our work in the clinic off of. So this is Credenda Magarelli protocol. Um, Dr. Magarelli, if you follow any fertility doctors, is a fertility doctor out in Colorado. Um, and his wife, Diane Credenda, is actually an acupuncturist. So they publish a lot of research um, in various journals and they call it the CMAP protocol. So Credenda Magarelli acupuncture protocol. So it basically combines those two protocols. So you do the Stoner Victorin protocol with the embryo transfer treatment, um, and then they kind of see what happens. So it, it resulted in a 24% higher pregnancy rate, um, but more importantly, an improvement in the live birth rate, right? So the idea of the take-home baby, I think is important to remember. It's, and we'll get to this later, it's, it's not just getting pregnant, right? Um, pregnancy is a whole journey in and of itself. And so that's an important piece to kind of remember. Um, I also think it's interesting that of cycles that weren't canceled, there was, um, you know, even a little bit of a difference there. So reduced miscarriage rate and then um, virtually zero ectopic pregnancy rate in people who did acupuncture with their IVF cycle. So not common with IVF in general, but, you know, any way you can avoid that is a good thing. Um, and then another interesting thing they found um, was that hormones are regulated throughout the cycle. Um, so prolactin and cortisol levels um, are definitely affected by the hormones and the medication of an IVF cycle. And so acupuncture actually kept them at a more normal level. So what you would normally see in a regular fertile menstrual cycle. Um, so that thought that was pretty interesting as well. And so we use this um, obviously with IVF, but then we've walked it back to incorporate into trying naturally uh, medicated cycles, IUIs, embryo adoption, all different types of cycles. So this is kind of where we sit, let's see. And then these are actually results from a clinic I used to work in in Indianapolis. This is research I published um, on our own patients before and after embryo transfer. So this was just patients that came to see us right before transfer and right after. Um, and this just kind of further corroborates what we saw. So the positive pregnancy rate um, was definitely higher, but then the clinical pregnancy rate which is ultrasound confirmed. So gestational sac on ultrasound. Um, but then also more importantly, like this loss rate was so much less. So that miscarriage rate, again, getting that take home baby is the goal, right? Um, and so then I wanted to do just a little bit um, of kind of an overview of a couple conditions that we see pretty commonly related to um, infertility and then also just treating just in terms of the symptoms themselves. So polycystic ovarian syndrome, you probably heard of it. Um, a lot of women that have this either don't ovulate or ovulate very irregularly um, and have, you know, pretty um, higher rates of infertility than sort of the general population. Um, and so acupuncture definitely improves symptoms. So it can help with metabolism, um, hirsutism, some of those other symptoms that come with polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, improves sex, hor sex hormone levels, excuse me. So um, that even includes insulin. So it in improves insulin levels in some of these patients, testosterone levels, estrogen levels, things like that. Definitely improves ovulation rates, which is you know obviously important if you're trying to get pregnant. And then acupuncture by itself with just polycystic ovarian syndrome assists conception in women, but without an increase in multiples that you often see with Clomid. So um, in my ideal world, if I had my way and no one was in my way, I would have everybody that, you know, was just sort of on that anovulatory or sort of, you know, ovulating irregularly, I would have them do three to six months of acupuncture without doing Clomid first. Um, I think you'd kind of see some folks get pregnant without even having to do medications and then, you know, not have so many multiples as well. Um, so endometriosis is another thing that we commonly see. Um, and so acupuncture, you know, can't cure endometriosis, it can't reverse it, but it can definitely help with some of the symptoms, um, which can flare up during certain types of hormonal treatment for people. So sometimes pain can get worse. So it can reduce pain and other symptoms like bloating or digestive issues that kind of come along with that. Um, and then reduce CA125 or that inflammatory marker that they sometimes check with endometriosis. So that's pretty neat too. Let's see. And then we'll kind of get into the mental emotional side of things. So I just wanted to do a quick list basically because it just encompasses everything, right? Um, so these are just a list of some of the things that you see with infertility. So, I mean, literally any emotion you can imagine, right? Um, 
it affects relationships, marriage, professional, social. So I know a lot of my patients are putting careers on hold because of their fertility treatment, which is definitely a mental, emotional effect. Um, some people question their worth in a relationship or a marriage, you know, friends and family say the wrong thing. So there's so much going on with relationships. And then what I thought was really interesting, and I didn't even realize until I was putting together this presentation is how many people um, meet the criteria for PTSD. And, and it's totally makes sense. Um, but it's a six times higher rate than the regular population. And I'm sure I'm speaking to the crowd with you, Kathy and Amanda, but I, I didn't really realize it was that much higher. Um, and over 25% of women one month after a miscarriage um, meet the criteria for PTSD. So certainly a lot of um, effects there. And I think it's also hard. We talk a lot about, you know, this journey is, is kind of carried alone. A lot of the things you go through that are hard in life are, um, you know, you share them with your friends, you share them on social media. There's kind of a community, even informally around whatever you're going through. So I think that makes it even harder. Um, and then 50% of women report that infertility is the most upsetting experience of their lives, which I thought was really profound. Um, and so I just kind of wanted to go over that. I mean, I know that I'm not telling anybody anything they are, don't already know, but I just think it's so just mind blowing. Um, and then on top of that, you add in the effects of fertility treatment itself, right? So you take these hormones, you take these medications. Um, I know Clomid is one of the worst offenders in our clinic for people with different issues. So it just makes everything worse, right? Um, decreased sex drive, hot flashes, bloating, digestive changes, weight gain, irritability, anger. I mean, it's, you know, and you, you kind of have to go through this to get to the other side in a lot of cases. So it's, it's more of an issue of how to cope with it. Um, and I think in that regard, a team approach is, is really important. And so in terms of acupuncture, um, whoops. So I, this is sort of just a basic list of the, the psychological effects of acupuncture. And so there's a lot of um, nervous, sister hor nervous system, excuse me, hormones that acupuncture can actually regulate. Um, so endorphin, serotonin, um, adrenaline levels, um, adrenocorticopic hormone, all that kind of stuff, um, improves symptoms of anxiety and depression. So that can really be a helpful thing, obviously. Improves sleep, which then just makes everything better. Um, can help with libido because that obviously, you know, if you're scheduling sex and you're sort of kind of on a clock and it, it, it can, you know, take a toll certainly on sort of those natural feelings, right? Um, regulates, oops, sorry about the typo, brain and nervous system function, um, and then induces a relaxed state. So I hear all the time that acupuncture is more relaxing than a massage, which is really nice. Um, and so it's just kind of a nice thing. Um, my patients always say, this is one thing that I, I hear probably most common, um, is that acupuncture is more relaxing than a massage. Um, and cycles with acupuncture are just easier than cycles without acupuncture. So it's sort of a interesting thing. So I wish everybody going through fertility treatment had the opportunity to do acupuncture. Um, I really think that it would make outcomes better. And, and one thing I was talking with Kathy about last week on the podcast, or I guess that came out yesterday, um, is that the, the stress piece is so important because from my perspective, and I tell patients this all the time, most people get pregnant eventually, right? So this is a journey. You have to find the right treatment and the right cause of your issues and, and all of these different factors. And so for most people, if they just keep going, which I realize is a, a financial, there's so many issues there, um, they will get pregnant eventually, you know? Um, and so if we can make that journey easier and help them feel a little bit more like themselves and be a little bit less stressed at work and a little bit less stressed at home, you know, it can make that difference between deciding to do another cycle or not. Um, so I think that's a good thing as well. Um, and then I have just a couple slides left. So this was, oh, for some reason, this picture didn't load. Sorry, guys. Whoops. Um, so I wanted to kind of go over what acupuncture looks like in terms of when to start treatment and how we time things. Um, and this is actually all on our website. You can download all of our treatment protocols, um, which go into a little bit more detail of all of this stuff. So we actually time um, acupuncture with each cycle. So if you're doing a natural cycle, we usually have a pretty long conversation about when you typically ovulate, what your luteal phase looks like, what your periods are like, um, and usually see people about three times throughout the cycle. So once in that early phase to support the egg development, once around ovulation, and then once during implantation. So basically what I try to tell people is that we're, you know, that we're trying to mimic basically that um, Credenda Magarelli protocol, right? So we're trying to stimulate blood flow during 
ovulation or uh, egg development and ovulation to help with lining and the follicle development. And then during implantation, trying to support that implantation process with that sort of polis protocol based treatment. So that's kind of where that comes from, that timing. Um, and then also in terms of the frequency, that seems to be a good frequency to both support that cycle and then support hormone regulation over time. Um, with an IUI cycle, it's pretty similar, but we just basically get to time it around the IUI itself, which is pretty cool. Um, and then for a retrieval cycle, um, ideally we start acupuncture about three months before the retrieval. So you've probably read in some of your research that um, egg development starts 90 days before you actually ovulate that follicle. So basically everything you're doing right now will affect the follicle that you ovulate in 90 days. Um, and so ideally we would see people three months before retrieval and especially so if there's any issue with ovarian reserve. Um, we often do start a lot sooner, closer to the cycle than that, um, but that would be an ideal world, of course. And then for any kind of frozen embryo transfer, whether it's a donor, adopted, um, just your own frozen embryo, that kind of thing, we would start about four weeks prior to the cycle start. Um, and then we increase the frequency as we get closer to the transfer. And then obviously with embryo transfer, we try to really pair those treatments right before and right after the treatment. Um, and so at least at our clinic, we try to be extremely flexible with that. Um, with weekend and evening hours available as needed. So, um, cause you know, obviously you don't get to choose that time. So, <laughs> and then we'll follow up. Yeah, one more treatment five to seven days after the transfer for that. Um, and then that's basically all I had is kind of an overview. So here's um, my contact information and I can stick my email address in the chat as well if anybody has any specific questions or needs help finding an acupuncturist. Um, we're on Instagram and Facebook. And then, you know, obviously our website is there, which has more information and things like that. So that is everything. So I'm Thank happy you. to answer questions that people have. I will stop sharing so I can see everybody better here. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, I just awesome. learned a lot, actually. Did I was you? like okay, good. <laughs> pictures of slides because I was like, that is brand new information. Because a lot of times people will ask in session, like, how does this help? What, what works? And I'm like, I don't know. It just does. Yeah. Um, couple questions for you girls yeah. on, um, feel free to unmute yourself or continue sending questions to me. Um, but I know some people who were even like sent me questions before we got on who wanted the recording. What about the men? Yes. So that's a great question. Um, we do treat men and acupuncture, um, has been shown to be very helpful for, you know, sperm quality, quantity, motility, morphology, all of those sorts of things. So, Again, in an ideal world, we would treat both men and women um, during the whole cycle. Um, the treatment frequency and recommendations would depend on whether there's a known male factor issue or we're just sort of treating to optimize things, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the things, we actually have a blog post on it on our, um, on our webpage, but there was some new research that came out about oxidative stress on sperm and how that could be a factor in, in miscarriage rates with patients that maybe have genetically normal embryos. There's no other known issue. Um, so that can kind of be a cause. So again, exercise and eating healthy and acupuncture, all of those things can kind of help reduce that oxidative stress. So yes, absolutely. Bring the guys in, bring the guys in. Yes. Um, another question is why, and <laughs> why don't doctors recommend this? You know, I don't know. Um, I'm really lucky in Knoxville that we have a really, really great relationship with the fertility clinic. Yeah. Um, I did in Indianapolis as well. So um, I think, you know, there is an old guard of doctors who um, are sort of protective of what they do. Um, I don't know if they feel like we're in competition because that's crazy. Like they are amazing and I just, we just want to support them. Um, I think there's a mystical nature to acupuncture, right? So yeah. Some people think that we're just sort of, you know, floating around barefoot and sort of moving energy around, which we definitely move energy for sure. But there are some absolute physical benefits of it that, you know, can't be denied in, in the literature. So wow. I think it'll change as some of the older people move out and it's actually taught in a lot of medical schools now. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. What about cost and insurance ballpark? You don't have to go through your price yeah. list. But so insurance. insurance occasionally. Um, so what I would do is give your insurance company a call and ask about the insurance or the acupuncture benefits, excuse me. Um, different clinics will take insurance or not take insurance. So you'll have to kind of work that out with each clinic. Um, if you have benefits, you want to make sure that they specifically cover fertility. 
Um, so if you're coming for an IVF cycle, we would have to diagnose that as an infertility um, code. And so you want to make sure that that is specifically covered. Some policies have provisions that they only pay for musculoskeletal issues or only for nausea in pregnancy, which is great after the cycle when it works um, and that kind of thing. So yeah, you'll want to call. Um, in general, you know, acupuncture in sort of a private clinic, meaning you go into a treatment room with the provider and it's just you and them one-on-one -on -one for about 30 minutes. Um, and then you get to rest with the needles. It's probably roughly $100-ish a treatment and a little bit yeah. more for the first visit because there's a little bit more intake process. Yeah, um, sure. There is, if cost is a big concern, um, there are community style acupuncture clinics. Generally, they don't specialize in infertility, but again, a licensed acupuncturist will have enough training to do a pretty good job. They won't probably have the scheduling flexibility or the timing recommendations, um, yeah. but you can't really have too much acupuncture. So, you know, you don't have to get it timed totally perfect. It's like it. eating too much broccoli, right? You can't do it. So you can't do it. Um, maybe in one sitting, but not, not all the time. Right. So, yeah. um, but those can run anywhere from like 20 to 50 a treatment. So I know, awesome. um, in Nashville, you guys have an awesome clinic, um, mm -hmm. that is just fantastic. Whose name is slipping me East Tennessee community acupuncture. No, they just in circle. They just renamed in circle. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. they just Alexa. changed their name, but I couldn't yeah. find Alexa's it. Alexa's amazing. She owns that clinic. She's a friend of mine. She's fantastic. Good. Um, and Good. so that's kind of an option too, if cost is an issue. Um, I know we also, because we have patients that, um, go to Nashville fertility quite often. So we actually will coordinate with acupuncturists there sometimes mm -hmm. if they're staying overnight for treatment or to do embryo transfer or things like that. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we try this to work is so helpful. Oh, good. Thank okay. you. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So I Nobody think there's one question. question in the chat. Let me see. Oh, it just says no. Nope. Thank, thank you, Jenny. You're welcome. You're welcome, Jenny. Okay. But if anybody thinks of anything later, or has anything like personal or specific, like really, feel free to email me. I'll stick my email in the chat. I think it was on your last slide, but yeah, yeah. you can go ahead and do that too. a long email address. Let me make sure I spelled it right. Okay. Yeah. So it's just Sarah at Tennessee reproductive acupuncture.com. So if you shoot me an email, I'm happy to help people coordinate, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's just awesome. So I'm happy to, it's such that. a good resource to have in Tennessee. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm, you guys are too. I'm so happy that there's somebody specializing in like fertility, mental health work. I mean, it's, it's such a, you have to know both the cycle, the timing, the medications. I mean, I had a patient once say to me, and I think this is just a testament to the specializing is, you know, it's, I had, she had seen another acupuncturist and she said it was so exhausting to have to explain the cycle to them because they, they knew enough about IVF, but they didn't know, okay, well, when are you starting Follistim or when is your retrieval? When are your ultrasounds? Some of these, these things. And I never thought of that, but I was like, oh, you're so right. You know? Um, and so I think just being able to walk in and just like unload with all of that language is so important. So good. good. Well, thank you. Welcome. Thank you guys. Right. Go ahead and stop recording. Okay. Ladies, Stephanie and Alexandria, thank you so much for